Today, I'm going to show you how to make a 3D extrusion in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And in today's episode, we're jumping straight into 3D. We're gonna show you how to add a, basically a logo to the front of a car by turning it into a 3D object. So this is an awesome application. Anytime you have like a logo or a simple shape, you can turn it into 3D really easily in Photoshop and then render it out to create a final image. You're gonna be surprised. It's not that difficult to do and Photoshop is actually pretty powerful when it comes to 3D. We got a great episode, guys. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. So starting off in Photoshop, we've got two images. We've got a car rendering here and we don't have any symbol up here. So I went on Adobe stock and found this little car logo. So the first thing I wanna do, and these are just regular uh, flat images, by the way. First thing I wanna do is use my move tool and I'm gonna hold shift and click and drag from one image to another. There we go, let's go ahead and hit convert. And here we are, now our logo is on our new document. So I'm gonna hit F for full screen. Now let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Okay, now what I wanna do is turn this shape into, you can see we've got two layers here, our background and then our shape here. Let's just double click and call this logo. I wanna turn this into a three dimensional object because I actually wanna make it look like it's on the hood of the car, which is gonna be pretty cool. Now you can do like layer effects, trying to do it like with bevel and emboss and things like that, but now Photoshop offers 3D. So we'll show you how to turn this into a 3D extruded object. It's actually relatively simple to do. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do here is we're gonna go to window and down to 3D. Okay, oh, window, sorry, I clicked on actions. Make sure you're clicked on window and down to 3D. Now I went ahead and put my 3D menu right over here just so we keep everything clean. So window and down to 3D. So what we wanna do is we're gonna be creating a new 3D object. So let's go back to our layers. Let's make sure we're on the layer that we wanna be turned into 3D. And this is the layer that we want 3D. Now it's important here that the logo is on a transparent background because it's gonna take whatever image pixels are on, you know, are on this layer and turn that into a 3D. So if you just have like a picture of your mom, it's not like your mom would become 3D. It would just take the picture and like kind of extrude it out. So. Keep that in mind that like it's using the shape of the pixels that are actually on the layer and then the transparency behind it to know, you know, this is what it should turn 3D, the transparency is left alone. Okay, so going to my 3D window here, our source we can choose from a few different options. We can choose from a work path, a selection, a file. Now in this case, I'm gonna choose my selected layers because we already have this layer selected. Okay, now we're going to click on our 3D extrusion there we go, and hit create. Okay, now we've got a couple of things going on here. Uh, first, it's going to say there's a different color profile, so let's go ahead and say we'll use that color profile. That's totally okay. Hit okay there. And the second thing that happens is it converts my working space to a 3D working space, which I actually don't prefer. So I'm gonna go up here to my working space and I'm just gonna click on the Flurn workspace, or if you have your own workspace already saved, you can, you can go ahead and convert back to that. So. Uh, now we're good to go. So if you see these grid lines here, things like that, these little icons, this, this is now you are in 3D view. So now you'll see our, th our 3D menu actually has quite a bit going on here. We have our logo here. We have each of these layers is basically the different uh, like front and side and back here for our 3D, okay? We have a light which lights the scene. We have our cameras, our current view and a default camera. And then we have some options for the scene and the environment. Okay, so that's the basics of it. So basically in turning any shape or logo into a 3D extrusion, it's pretty simple. Really all I did was just hit a button. Now, what we wanna do is take it a few steps further because I actually wanna make it look like somewhat realistic. I want it to look like it's on the hood of my car and I, I wanna render it out. I, you know, it's like, all right, we got this 3D thing. Let's make it actually work for us. So let's go through. We're gonna show you some of the options that make working in 3D a little bit easier and then just kind of explain everything. And then we're gonna jump in and actually like try to accomplish getting this thing on the hood of the car. So some of the options I would recommend, I'm gonna to go to view, go down here to show, and over here in 3D, 
Make sure you've got your ground plane, your lights, your selection, and your overlay. Make sure all of those are checked. This will give you a good idea of what you're actually working with here in Photoshop. Okay, now if they're in your way, like this is the ground plane, if I unclick that, you can see my ground plane becomes invisible temporarily. If you want to get it back, you can simply go back to your ground plane. Okay, now how this works, when you're in 3D and you're, you're going to be working in 3D, as long as, let's go over to your layers, as long as you're clicked on your 3D layer. So if I click on my background, I'm no longer working in 3D. I'm working, you know, I can just create a new layer and use my brush tool and paint over it anywhere I want, stuff like that, okay? But as long as you're clicked on your 3D layer and you can see this 3D icon there, bump, there we go. Now we're clicked on our 3D layer and I can start to use my 3D three-dimensional tools. Okay, so we're on our 3D layer. Let's go to 3D. Now, here we have our logo. There we go, our logo. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on my move tool. So with your logo selected, now we have our 3D tools up at the top. So the logo, this is basically the, the shape that we extruded, okay? Now you don't really have to worry about these different materials here. This is basically like what's going on the sides and the front of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and collapse that down. So if I click on my logo, let's talk about our different uh, icons right up here at the top. Now, these are basically going to move whatever we're selected around. So in this case, I've got my actual logo selected. So if I hover over here, we're gonna see it's gonna rotate the 3D object, roll, drag, slide, and scale. So let's just start off by clicking on the rotate, and I can just click and drag here. We can now see I'm rotating that in three-dimensional space. Okay, which is pretty cool. Let's hit Control or Command Z to undo. We're gonna hit roll and it's gonna spin this left and right. There we go. I can move this, okay, which is just gonna move this around my image and you can see it is in 3D. You know, over here, you can see it's extruding that way, over here, extruding that way and things like that. So let's just hit undo a couple times. Control or Command Z. There we go. Get it back to place. Okay, and we can go ahead and pan this in and out. This is like getting closer and farther from the camera. Okay, now we can also scale this. We can just simply click here and drag out, making this larger and smaller if we want. Or you can just scale, you can move on your horizontal axis. Sorry, we'll just show you here. Let's just zoom into our image. Uh, we'll just show you, you can scale your entire logo simply by clicking and dragging. Or you can use this little uh, icon here. This is like, this will move on your y-axis here, okay? This will rotate, there we go, around your z-axis, okay? And here will scale along your y-axis as well. Okay, so you got a, quite a bit of control. Let's just hit Control or Command minus to zoom out. You have a lot of control over your objects in Photoshop. So let's go back to our uh, rotate view. Now, also keep in mind, we have a few other things in this 3D file. So we have our logo here. We also have a light. Let's go ahead and click on our light. And now we can move our light around. And as you see, I'm moving my light around. The light on my object is shifting as well, which is really cool. Okay, so you can see you can point your light in different directions. Now you can add lights and there's a lot of stuff you can do in 3D. And we have other tutorials on working with 3D. This, I, I don't have time to cover everything in 3D in this case, but this is a general basics. Okay, next we have our current view. And if I wanna rotate my view around, I can rotate my view. So now I'm looking at the top of my object there. Okay, and we can see our, our little grid line and things like that. So now we're at the top of our object. Okay, so by now you should have a relatively good idea of kind of like what we're doing here. Basically, you just select the object you wanna edit in the 3D menu, and you can use those tools up at the very top to rotate your view and scale it and things like that. Okay, now we're gonna jump in and we're gonna show you the properties window, which has to do with the actual properties of the 3D objects that you click on. Let's go ahead and start by clicking on our logo again. So we're clicked on our logo and you can see I can, I can rotate my logo and things like that if I want to. Let's just hit Control or Command Z to get it back where it is. Now what I'd like to do is click on my properties window and here we have the properties for this object. Now in this case, this is a 3D extrusion. So I have an option here for extrusion depth. I can increase my extrusion depth. I can go back the other way as well. So in this case, I, I wanted to make this like a, an emblem on a car. So we just want it to be extruded just a little bit, something like that. Okay, 
Now we also have a few different shape presets here. We're going to click here and clicking through my shape presets, you might find, let's go ahead and I'm just going to zoom in. There we go. These are our shape presets. Some of these are going to look more like what you want and some of these are going to look less like what you want. All right. Now in this case, we're going to click on this preset and you can all, you, sorry, we're going to click on this one here, which gives us a little bit of a beveled edge right there, which I, I think is kind of nice. So we have a few different presets for the shape. Okay. Now here again, we're still in the properties and we're still in the properties of our logo. So our logo is selected and we're in the properties of our logo. Now we have a few different options here within the properties window. Okay. So let's go ahead and hover over those and see what they say. First we have our mesh, then we can deform this if we want. We can change what the caps look like, which is the end caps like this, this, this surface and the behind surface. Okay. And then we have our coordinates. So I'm going to go ahead and click on our coordinates. The thing that I want to do here is I want to show you about how you can, you know, previously we just moved it around by using these tools here. Okay. Like the rotate tool and things like that. And that that's fine, but it's hard to be precise when you're just <laughs> doing this, right? So here in our coordinates, again, we're in 3d, we're clicked on our logo and I'm going to click on the coordinates of now this object. So here, every time I rotate it, you're going to see that our rotation numbers change there. So I'll rotate it around and we see those rotation numbers change there again. So if I would just want to reset my rotation, I'm just going to click on this reset icon. There we go. And our rotation is going to be completely reset. Now, in this case, you'll see all, as I rotate it, I've also got a shadow on my ground plane. Okay. That shadow on my ground plane. The reason I have that, let's go to 3d. Okay. I'm going to click on my scene and go back to our properties. Okay. Sorry. Instead of scene, I think it's environment. Yep. Environment. We're going to go back to properties and I've got my option for shadow selected. So we do have a shadow here on our ground plane. Okay. And I can change the opacity of my shadow on the ground plane as well, which is pretty cool. Again, you can do a lot of stuff with 3D. I don't have time to show you everything, but I, this shadow is important because I want there to be a shadow on the car also. Because if I want to place this emblem on the car, I want a shadow on there to make it look more realistic. So what I need to do is I, this logo is standing straight up right now. I want to like lay it down on its side and it'll create a shadow along my ground plane. And then I can rotate my view to make it look like it's actually on the car, which is going to be pretty cool. All right. So jumping back into Photoshop, let's go back to our 3D. I'm going to click on my logo here because that's what we want to edit, right? Now, again, with our logo selected, we're going to go to our properties. I'm going to go over to my coordinates. Okay. And now I want to lay it down. Remember, we want to like, I want to lay it down that way on the ground. Okay. Now let's go ahead and reset these coordinates. Let's see what each of these X, Y, and Z coordinates do. So I'm going to click and rotate it around the Y axis. That's not going to do it. So let's reset it. The Z axis, mm, that's not going to do it either. So let's go ahead and reset this. Our X axis, oh, this looks like it's going to do it. So let's just type in 90 right there. All right, there we go. Properties, click on our mesh and type in 90. And there we go. Now it's just straight up and down. Now let's go ahead. I want to make the extrusion depth a little bit smaller. So we're going to go to our 3d, make sure you're clicked on your logo, our properties. And here in our, uh, extrusion properties, we're just going to bring our extrusion depth a little bit lower. There we go. Again, I want to make this look like an emblem on the front of a car. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to my 3d coordinates and you can see it's floating in space a little bit. Here's my object and here's my shadow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit move to ground. There we go. And it's going to pop it right there on the ground. So now we have our 3d object. Okay. It's on the ground and it's casting a shadow, which is really nice. Now, if I go back to my layers and click on my background layer and zoom out, you can see it doesn't look like it's <laughs> actually on the car right now because the perspective is all kinds of weird. Now, in this case, I don't want to move the 3d object itself because it's already on the ground plane. We got a shadow there. Okay. The, the position of the 3d object is actually great. What I want to move is the three dimensional camera. So I'm going to move the three dimensional camera 
to put the 3D object in place with perspective to the car. I know it's a little bit complex, but if you start clicking around here and kind of playing, you'll, you'll get the idea pretty soon. Okay, so jumping back in, let's go ahead and click on our logo. So we, we do want to be in 3D here. So we're going to click on our 3D and remember what we just said. I don't need to move the object itself now. What I want to do instead is move my camera. So I'm going to click here on our current view, okay? And then I can start to use my rotation tools with my current view. So let's go ahead, I'm going to go back to my properties of the current view. So you can see if, if I'm on 3D and clicked on our camera and go to properties, you can see now we've got different, uh, we've got different options for the camera. And I can go ahead and reset the rotation of my camera if, as well if I need to. Okay, so it's way down here. So let me go ahead and just click here and drag this around there, okay? Now I'm gonna use my pan tools. There we go, and put it in place. Now about this time, I don't really need my three-dimensional ground plane anymore. This, uh, you see the blue and the black and all this grid. So I'm gonna go to view, and I'm gonna go to show 3D ground plane. I'm just gonna turn that off real quick. Okay, so again, in my 3D view, I'm clicked on my view, so again, I'm not moving the object. It may look like I'm moving the actual icon here, the, the logo rather, but I'm not. What I'm actually moving is the camera that's viewing, viewing that, okay? So let's go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. And basically what I'm doing is kind of like I, I'm placing it here on, uh, on the car. All right, and that looks pretty good. We can just go ahead and zoom in and yeah. That looks, that looks pretty good. Let's go zoom out just a little bit more. It's a little bit large on the car. We don't need it to be that big. Okay, uh, let's put it there. Now, we're looking pretty good. You can see the shadow here. Let's just zoom in to the image. The shadow here, look how long that shadow is, right? That's like, that, that doesn't make any sense with the image. So now we're gonna go ahead and click on the light. We're gonna move the light around and you're gonna see the shadow is gonna change dynamically and it should change how it looks on the car itself. Back in Photoshop, we're gonna click here in 3D and remember, we've worked on our logo, we moved that around, we've moved our current view around. Now I'm gonna click on my light and we have what's called an infinite light and I can move my infinite light around as well, okay? Now, in this case, the infinite light itself is kind of covering up there we go, it's kind of covering. So I'm gonna hold down the space bar and just move my entire document so I can see what my light's doing here. Okay, so with my light now selected, I can move the infinite light around. And there are different types of light. An infinite light just basically, this is like the sun. So you can see as I move it around, it's creating shadows in different directions. So what I wanna do here is find a shadow direction that actually looks realistic. Again, we don't need it to be that far but maybe just a tiny little shadow kind of coming up like that. I think that's gonna help it look nice and realistic. Okay, now we're still in the infinite light here. So I'd like to brighten this light up a little bit. Let's go to our properties. Okay, there we go. And here on the properties for our light, again, remember we're selected on our light. And so the properties for the light, now we have the color is white, which makes sense, okay? And I'm gonna increase my intensity. So I'm just gonna increase the intensity and that's too bright. I want it to look about like it, it just kind of fits onto that car. Okay, which is cool. And we do want it to cast a shadow. Okay, so we have, this is no shadow. This is, there we go, sh casting a shadow. And we can increase the softness of the shadow as well. If we want a soft shadow, we can have it be a soft shadow or a hard shadow. Okay. All right, I think we are looking pretty good. Let's increase the intensity just a little bit more. And you know what, the shadow is a little bit dark, so we're gonna go back to 3D, click on our environment, go to our properties for that, and our shadow, let's bring the opacity down for our shadow just a little bit on the environment there. All right, there we go, we're looking pretty good. So that looks good, I just wanna, you know what, it needs to be a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna click on my current view here. We're just going to go ahead and pan this out just a little bit. All right, and let's go ahead and put the logo in place. And I'm gonna use my space bar to kind of put it back. All right, and that looks pretty good. Now, if I zoom in here, 
you're going to see uh, the car itself looks great, right? But if I zoom in, this the, the logo in 3D, it doesn't look that great just yet. I mean, it, it looks just fine, actually, from right here. Uh, but it doesn't look that great when we're zoomed in. So now we've done most of the work already. We've created a 3D extrusion. We've shown you how to edit your lights, how to like lay it down on the ground plane, how to create a shadow, things like that. Now we just need to turn it into an image. I need it to like, you know, when I zoom in, I don't want it to look like some crappy little 3D thing. I want it to be an actual image. And to do that, all we have to do is render out our object. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you out how to render. So now that our object is created, and again, we're zooming in here, and it, I, I just want to show you again, this is why we want to render, because it's just, it's so jagged, it just really doesn't look that real. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom out here. Now, we're going to render this in Photoshop. So let's go to 3D, and down here to Render 3D Layer. And basically what rendering does is it turns this from a, um, you know, from like a three-dimensional vector shape, into an image. It calculates our lighting and all the shadows and everything like that. It just ba basically makes it look more realistic. Now, in this case, you see these little like blue dots moving around the screen because it's, it's rendering each of these different locations. And it goes in multiple passes. There's a lot of information here to capture and to kind of calculate. So even though you can see when it gets to my icon, there we go, it's going to kind of just make it a little bit better over and over and over again. And these renders can take a little bit of time. All right, now I'm gonna hit escape real quick. That's gonna cancel the render, but no big deal. I can still go back to my layers, click on my background layer and zoom in, and we're gonna see already it looks better, but you can see now it looks like a, it looks like a rendered version of that. So let's go back to our 3D layer. We can go to 3D and I can just go to, there we go. We can click on our render 3D layer. You're gonna see this is the unrendered version of it. All right, and in just a second, it's gonna kind of come through and render it out, there we go. So each time it renders this version, it's going to look better and better and better. Now, in this case, it's actually going to take like probably 10 to 15 minutes to render this out perfectly, so I'm not gonna make you wait for that, but we've done it. We've actually created a logo out of that like just simple 3D shape. We've extruded it out, we've created the logo, put it in place, and now we're rendering, rendering it out. So we're gonna skip it ahead until the render is actually done and show you what that looks like. All right guys, our render has finished up. Let's go ahead and take a look. So again, it looks pretty much similar from <laughs> this point of view, but now if we zoom into our image, we can see our rendered icon has a lot more detail. The shadows calculated and the highlights and everything, everything looks great. So from here on out, all you have to do is save this out as a regular image and you're good to go, which is pretty cool. I think, uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I mean, considering we just did this live without any real like, <laughs> you could put a lot more work into it if you wanted, but I think it looks great and it's a great example of creating a 3D extrusion within Photoshop. Guys, thanks so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun creating it. If you have any questions or comments about this tutorial, just leave them right down below. And if you want to learn more Photoshop and photography, simply click on your screen right about now. We'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone.